Hola, hola, everyone. This is Dr. Yvette. It's been a while since I did a solo episode, and so I thought now would be a good time to get back to it, do a little bit of a shorter episode, and talk to you about a topic that has been coming up a lot for me, both in coaching sessions and DMs and emails, and even folks who know me, like friends, family, reaching out, asking me for my input on getting organized. Like, Yvette, can you help me organize my life? Dr. Yvette, can you help me with, you know, how do I work smarter? I feel like my life is a mess, help. And the reason why a lot of people come and approach me about that is because I've said this multiple times, but it's not unusual for people to tell me that I'm the most organized person they know. And I think that for many years, I didn't realize that that was my thing. I just assumed that everybody did what I did, that everybody managed their time the way that they did. Everybody had, you know, systems in place the way that I did. It was, you know, I'll be frank, it was a, a bit of a, of a way for me to manage my mental health, my physical health issues. It was the thing that was in my control. So when I didn't feel like I had control over, say, you know, dealing with depression or anxiety or dealing with flare-ups with my chronic illness and pain, I knew that I could take control of my calendar of my to-do list, of my tasks, and setting up organizational systems, setting up standard operating procedures, which I'll talk about more right now. All of that has helped me to just manage my life and manage my health, my physical, my mental, my spiritual health. And so because I'm having these conversations, again, on the side with other people, and they found them to be very helpful. In fact, I'm in the process of developing a workshop for a group all about um, this topic on organizing systems and, and SOPs. So let me kind of get into it and why I think it's important for you to think about it and consider trying this out as you manage your own workload, both in undergrad and in grad school. So what do I mean when I say that it's important to set up organizing systems. When I'm talking about organizing systems, I mean, that can be, uh, be applied in any aspect, any area of your life. It could literally mean, you know, how to set up a system in your home to keep your house tidy or clean or whatever. But in this case, I'm actually referring to digital systems, to systems on your computer, because many of us, our work is, is virtual. A good portion of our work is on a computer. And when we do our work, we don't even think about it, but we rely on different types of containers. We have systems in place that we don't even realize are there, whether they're good or bad. Um, it's hard to tell because sometimes we don't think twice about how we do the work that we do and how we organize the work that we do. But let me go back to talking about we have containers, we have ways that we contain and divide and compartmentalize the work that we do. So what's an example of a container? Um, your email inbox is a container. It contains the messages that you're receiving from a wide range of different um, people and units and orgs, et cetera, that are needing to share something with you. So an email is a container. Your desktop, your the folders on your computer, that's another container. That's another way that you're containing all of the information that you have on your computer, so your folders. Then there's also um, cloud-based storage. So um, if you're using iCloud or if you're using some sort of uh, electronic drive, you could be using Google Drive, Box, Dropbox is a way for you to contain the information that you save, your folders, your files, your PDFs, your images, et cetera, that you may need to get your work done. They're all containers and they are all part of your system, the system that you use to navigate your everyday work. 
And so when people come to me telling me, oh my goodness, I need your help. There are a couple of things that might be coming up for them. One is maybe their email inbox it has gotten out of hand. They've got thousands of unread emails. They have um, email anxiety because they don't even know where to start. Sometimes they have trouble keeping track and staying on top of their inbox because they don't have a system in place for organizing their emails. And so they just get a bunch of emails. Some they reply to, some they don't. Um, sometimes they don't have a method for flagging important emails. And so that's where it's important to set up a system. Um, in my, I have a 15 page freebie, um, gradschoolfemtrain.com backslash kit. So in my grad school resource kit, I have one handout that talks about my email organizing system. And so this is what I've been doing for a long time without even realizing that that was my system, without realizing again that other people weren't doing this. And so when I get an email, I don't even think twice. I get an email, I read it, I label it. So, um, you know, whatever folder, you know, it might be work-related, it might be health-related, it might be related to bills, finances. So whatever it is, I label it. Then I flag it. So I add a little star and there's different ways for you to star your um, emails if you use Gmail like I do. And so I have different icons for each star. There's a red exclamation mark. There's a purple question mark. There is a green check mark. And so typically if something's important, I need to get back to them, I haven't responded, I'll flag it with a red ex exclamation mark. If I've responded to it, but I still need it in my inbox because I need to file something that was important there. I need to get to it for some other reason, but I've already responded to it. I usually just flag it with a green check. Like I don't have to worry about, about it right now. I've already responded. And if it's an email where I know, okay, I can't answer it right now. I need more information. I'm a little bit confused, whatever it is. I just can't respond right away. I'll put a, a purple question mark. And so I label and I flag. After that, I may get back to it later or not. Uh, but once I'm ready to respond, after I respond to all of my emails, every single email, I archive it. Yes, there's a button on your email inbox. That's an archive button. No, you're not throwing away the email. No, it's not lost. <laughs> I, I've gotten these, these questions so many times. It's not lost. You have an inbox and your email, and you have an all mail box in your email. And so if you go to inbox, it's everything that you see right now. If you go to all mail, it's everything that you see right now, plus the things that you've archived. So I archive most things, unless it's spam or trash, then I throw it away, I, I send it to the trash. But most things I will archive because you know I might need to reference it later. And that's my, my system. I have an organizing system. I have a way, a method of staying on top of my emails that helps me to minimize my email anxiety. And um, the steps, each step, if you, know, if, if you type up the steps that I took to, to address or re reply and keep my emails organized for every single email that I get, that's my, uh, my standard operating procedure. Step one, open the email and label it you know, on, with a folder. Step two, flag it with some sort of star. Step three, respond. Step four, archive. Four steps, every single email, follow it every single time. That's my standard operating procedure. And if I were to one day delegate my email inbox to someone to help me manage it, I would then give them the, those instructions, those standard operating procedures have them follow it like that so that it can continue to remain organized. And that's why I don't get too overwhelmed. I do sometimes get overwhelmed with my email inbox, but I don't get too overwhelmed because I have a way of managing it. So um, I mentioned the standard operating procedures <laughs> and I wanna go back to it a little bit um, because what do I mean when I say standard operating procedures? I don't think that's a phrase that we use a lot, at least um, I wasn't familiar with it uh, in the humanities for both my undergrad and my PhD. It wasn't a phrase that I heard a lot. 
In fact, a lot of people that I worked with were not the most organized people now that I think about it. Uh, but it's something that I, came, I became more familiar with once I started working full time, once I became a staff member, once I had to manage um, drives, different files and folders and lots of information, including um, federal information. And I had to abide by federal uh, policies and procedures. Uh, and so knowing and setting up, so knowing about standard operating procedures, so having descriptions, having step-by-step -step instructions for how you do what you do, every single thing that you do, writing a paper, sending an email, whatever it is that's part of your workload, writing down the instructions. That's one less mental load for you to worry about because in the future, if you need to get, do that thing, even if it feels second nature to you, it's nice to have those instructions to go back to on a day that maybe you're struggling, you can just follow the steps. And so let me give you an example of another standard operating procedure. So you're listening to this podcast. Thank you for being a listener. And um, you know that, okay, I, I put one out pretty consistently every week, sometimes twice a week, it just depends. And sometimes if you know life happens, it may drop down to every other week, but you can fairly consistently expect to have a podcast from me released a couple times a month, you know, every week, every other week. And how do I do that? Well, I have my own procedure. I know that I need to sit down and physically, you know, record, <laughs> record on a topic. From there, the next step after recording is to actually edit the audio. So make sure it sounds okay and do some minor editing. I'm not a pro, <laughs> but I do some minor editing and then producing, producing it, like actually putting the episode together with the intro sound, with the outro sound. Sometimes I might add, you know, a little memo at the end with, you know, if there's an ad in there, then making sure that that's on there. So that's all part of producing. And my podcast, I have it up on a variety of different audio platforms, but I also put it up on YouTube. So that's another step that I take. Um, if, and when it comes to uploading the actual file. So there's the recording, there's editing, there's producing. Then I have to create a flyer for every single episode. If I have a guest, I'm sending that flyer to the guest so that they have it in advance in case they want to promote it. I have to write a description of the episode. So for that, you know, I don't always remember, memorize everything that we talk about. So I may have to listen to the episode again, just to kind of be reminded of what the episode was about. And then after writing the description, I need to schedule my outreach posts, my marketing posts, my promote, promotion posts to social media. And that's across several different platforms. So that can include um, Instagram, which is where I am the most active. And then it also includes Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And so it's scheduling those posts to make sure that everywhere where I am visible on social media, they get to see the flyers of my podcast. Um, all of that, every single step, record, edit, produce, flyer, description, schedule the post. That's part of a standard operating procedure. I have it already, um, I have it memorized, but I also have it written down. So that way every week I know I have a list of steps to follow and steps to check off on my to-do list. And now it's pretty straightforward. It's not as difficult as it was when I was starting out and trying to figure out the flow and the motion of these things. So that's why standard operating procedures are helpful. You should consider typing them up for your own workload, whatever it is that you do regularly. Are you writing? Are you publishing? Are you teaching? Are you sending emails? Are you managing a household? Are you paying your bills? Like So everything that you do, try to see if there are ways for you to develop a system so that things become more routine so that it's easier for you to get them done. Now, when it, when it comes to talking about systems and standard operating procedures, I also think it's important to talk about time management because sometimes along with feeling like this 
sense of overwhelm. Maybe you feel like your <laughs> desktop is messy or your email is out of control. Um, you might also be struggling with time management, maybe a sense of overwhelm at having so many things on your plate, so many aspects to your life, so many roles that you play, so many hats that you wear. And for each of them, it feels like none of them acknowledge the other. So you might be a parent and navigating your children and their education. You might be a student and trying to figure out um, how to get a homework assignment done for a class. And then each professor fails to acknowledge that you're a student that has other classes and other professors and other priorities and you're a parent and you've got an, uh, maybe your own parents that you have to help out financially and a part-time job. And, you know, like the list can go on and on and on of all the things, all the responsibilities that we have. We are so multifaceted and we have a lot going on. And so it's really easy to um, get overwhelmed. And for me, at least in my life, setting up systems, they're not perfect, but even the act of trying and the act of being intentional with setting aside some time every single week for my calendaring, for my to-do list, it helps me to take control of what I can do and uh, minimize the overwhelm, minimize the anxiety. So um, I do think it's important for you to figure out a calendaring system that works for you, whether it's a planner, an online calendar, figuring that out, and also a to-do list system. Are you a post-it person? Are you someone who likes to use an online app? A lot of people like to use Trello, or they like to use others like Notion, or um, they'll use Evernote, or in my case, I use Kanban Flow. K-A-N-B-A-N-F-L-O-W. Um, very simple, just a way to have different columns and write out all my tasks for my to-do list, color code them, add deadlines. Um, that I really like when, when it comes to my own tasks, I have different columns according to the different aspects of my workload. So I have an admin column, I have a podcasting column, coaching, um, you know, a personal one. And then I have a column that's all, all the things that I need to get done today. So I make sure that I have every week, a day in the week where I update my to-do list and I update my calendar. So what does that mean? That means every Sunday afternoon or Monday late morning when I'm feeling okay, I will sit down and plan out my week. What are the things that absolutely have to get done today? So I go over my to-do list, I prioritize my tasks, the things that are high priority that have to get done this week, or I would really like to get done this week. I put it all on my calendar. I put in the time for me to eat my meals. I put in the time that I need to go pick up my son from school. I put in the time you know, that I am going to be taking a walk. So everything that I know that I want to get done, including the things that might not seem like they're work related, but they help me. So the, the keystone tasks, the things that are um, habits that I have that help me to have a good day and to get work done and feel good. I include that. That means, you know, having time to get ready. That means having time to um, listen to a podcast. That's part of my routine. As I get ready, I listen to a podcast or I listen to an audiobook. I put all of the things that I need to get done and want to get done on my calendar. And then I see sometimes there's not enough space for everything. And so that's when you have to make difficult decisions. What can you let go of? What can you put on pause? What can you delegate or ask for help on? And in some cases, I know like personal close friends who have and, and students who have had to take time off completely because no amount of organization and systems and time management can prevent burnout if you have too much going on. So I've had students who have had to take uh, a quarter, two quarters, a whole year off from schooling to take care of themselves. And I deeply respect that. I also have peers, colleagues, friends, 
who have had to take medical leaves to take care of themselves because of the burnout. Burnout is not something, it's something that I've personally experienced um, more than one occasion. It's not fun. I, I, it's not something that I, you know, it's just not something that I encourage. I don't encourage working yourself to the point of getting sick, which is what I did. Um, and so when I talk to you about setting up these systems and why they're beneficial, and I often say it's so that you can work smarter, not harder, so that you can do more in less time. And when I say that, I don't mean that I want you to do more in less time so that you have more time for more work and you can be even more efficient and more accomplished and more productive. No, no, no. What I mean by that is do more in less time so that you have more time for other parts of you, more time for rest, more time to take care of yourself, more quality time with your loved ones, more time to try a new hobby, um, more time to do anything that you want that may seem fun for you, that will help you. Because <laughs> even though um, most of y'all who listen to this podcast are in, you know, in your journey of pursuing higher ed and you love learning, life is not just about work. There's a lot more to life than, than being productive. So yeah, I just, I wanted to have this conversation with you all about setting up systems so that you can start to think about that, about maybe one area of your life where you can try to be a little bit more organized. Maybe you can start with your email, or maybe you can start with tackling your desktop and then making a point of scheduling in some time every week, you know, once a week, every week at the bare minimum, once a month, come on y'all, um, to keeping things organized because being organized requires maintenance. It's, it's not just you do something once and then set it and forget it. No, it's, it's constantly maintaining. It's remembering, oh yeah, I'm supposed to archive that message or, oh yeah, like I have all my, my desktop starting to get full again. I should probably spend, you know, five, 10 minutes to put these files away in, in a folder so that they're not all on my desktop. So it's, it's that maintenance. It's that time every week to check up on yourself, to check up on your calendar, to check up on your systems that will help you. It's a little bit of front loading work right now that will save you a bunch of time later on. So yeah, that's, that's all I have to say in terms of kind of the basics of setting up organizing systems and standard operating procedures. I hope that you found at least one takeaway from this episode. And if you did, don't forget to share it with me. I will talk to you all next time.